Ah, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening, man? Um, October 6, 2020. God damn, god damn. What a day. What a day. Um, played six trades today and took a loss on all of them. Uh, mostly PPSI. Um, this is actually the next day. Uh, it's actually October 7, 20. Um, because I needed to take a moment to reflect and realize, you know, I got to start uh, breaking these habits of executing so many trades in one day. Um, PPSI was the highest percent gainer of the day. Um, if you go over here, uh, so I had a huge run from a, a dollar seventy to nine forty, um, and I tried to capture the move in in this area, which I did wind up getting a four percent gain but didn't capture it because of the shift in the market when I'm noticing the market picking up a little bit. Um, so um, I winded up taking a mi minus 14% um, on this day um, because uh, two things happened um, psychologically. First of all, FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, because of this huge run, when I seen it curl back here, because um, that's actually the five minute. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for right here. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Um, so when I notice this curl right here, as it's curling right here, this is where I purchased it. And it had a nice pop. I was in at 812 and it popped up to um, 862. So a 40 cent gain, which I was up 4% on it. Um, but because of the current market conditions, I was thinking, okay, it had a nice curl. I was thinking it would at least retest in this 940 or keep running. And based off what I've been seeing in the market lately with uh, these low floats now coming back, uh, being a little more consistent, um, that I thought, I'll just give it a little more time. And then all of a sudden we had this tank. And then if you watch it play out, it just kept going, man. And so... Um, the fear of missing out and also revenge trading will cause me to take four trades. One, two, three, four, and I lost all of them. Um, first trade, I took a minus 3.85%. Second trade, I took a minus 1.25%. Um, third trade on it, I took a minus 2.98%. Fourth trade on it, I took a minus 3.5%. And that was all from revenge trading because I just kept trying to hammer at it um, with the fear that it would pop. Um, so something that I also got to work on psychologically is wait for my levels, man. And I didn't wait for the levels. Um, when it popped and dropped, I sold it. And then I tried to buy the dip. And then it dropped again. Sold it. Then I wanted to buy the dip again over here. And it just nothing ever played out, man. Um, it just stayed right underneath there and then pretty much faded. And uh, I took a huge loss on it. Um, I mean, not too bad. Like the actual trades, I still stuck to my plan as far as cutting my loss at um, the certain level. You know, I, you know, minus 3.8 was a little much and the minus 3.5 was a little much. But the rest of the losses were pretty good. Um, but again, I've noticed, like I said in my last video, um, just wait for the back side of the move because I had the opportunity here with OPTT and I had the opportunity here with ELSE. Um, but I just played them way too soon and they them two eventually popped. As you can see here, I could have had the potential of making a 19% gain. Um, it only pulled back 5%. So it met my criteria of minus 6 plus 13, but I wanted up taking a 1.7% loss. And then same here. Um, had a pullback of 4.5% and I winded up cutting it at 1.35, but then had a huge run of 62%. Um, both met my criteria minus 6 plus 13, but they were later in the day. This one was at almost 9 o'clock, 8.48 and topped at 9.54. This one was at 9.12 and topped at 12.52. Um, but I was trying to play that PPSI so much, man, just for the fear of missing that large move. Um, so, you know, man, it hit me. Then another thing happened, okay, um, which I have not recorded that data because I did an overnight trade. 
And to be honest, I regretted it the moment I took it on PPSI. I started seeing it reverse in the sevens. Um, right in this area. Okay, when this just started popping, I was like, okay, now it's starting to look promising. In this, boop, you see the pop up to the 750s? Um, I winded up just impulsively buying it. Okay, just impulsively buying it, thinking it was going to run without even having no day trades. I didn't have no fucking day trades, all right? So I bought it, and I instantly knew. I was like, fuck, man, I don't even have no day trades. Instantly regretted. I had a complete mental meltdown on this particular day. And if you really look at everything I've been doing so far, I've been sticking to routine and been pretty good on my routine. But PPSI just wanted up fucking destroying me. And it happens, you know what I mean? I let my emotions get the best of me. I, I just completely threw my plan out the window trying to chase this motherfucker because I was already down four separate trades on this. So on this particular one, I believe I was down somewhere around, um, let's see, um, right here, four, five percent, five, uh, 10, 11, almost 12% down already on this particular trade out of them four trades so man you know i was just like man dude it, could, it was showing strength as you can see it's consolidating within this channel <laughs> Ooh, excuse me um between the, these two red lines it was consolidating and i purchased it somewhere in this area of the sevens and i just didn't have no more trades so i said man i'm just gonna close my laptop and you know at this point, I just threw the plan out the fucking window. Um, holding and hoping is not a fucking strategy, but that's exactly what the fuck I did because I let this one stock defeat me mentally um, when I executed four trades, just thinking, man, I could capture it. I could capture it. It's going to bounce. It's going to bounce. It's going to bounce. And then this is how the day played out for the rest of that day. Boom, boom, boom. And then I come look at it. Um, before the market closed, and I'm fucking down, um, you know, 20% uh, more on top of that 12. So now I'm down 32% on this one fucking stock. And then it get, you know, then it closes. It closes right here in the in the 480s, which is down uh, another 22%. That's 22% plus 12. So you know, in that one position, I was down 22%. Okay. Ugh. Horrible. Horrible. Why, James? Why? You know what I mean? Like, why? Why the fuck you do that to yourself, bro? You know what I mean? Fucking defeated me. But it started to curl back in here. Okay? So after hours, I'm noticing it curl back after hours. So I'm like, cool. You know, finally after hours closed. So I'm only down about 4% now. Okay? So I'm like, cool. This is going in my direction. I'm starting to see that it can come back. And it has the potential to come back. As you see today, it closed at 689. It closed. So if I would have stayed in it for the whole day, 689, I would have only been down minus 1.2%. Okay? Because I did notice that it was coming back. So I'm like, okay, if I would have purchased at the very low, I would have easily made a profit. Okay? So I'm on West Coast time. So the market opens pre-market at 1 o'clock in the morning for me. So I decided to set my alarm at 1250. So I could come to the market open because what we've been seeing lately in pre-market is huge spikes at the very open of pre-market. Kind of what we um, pretty much had right here. And it did spike up to 723. So that put me in the profit zone of about 1.7%. Okay? We are in pre-market. Pre-market did not execute my fucking order. I was sitting there. I hit, you know, set it in. I even put it below the bid, um, hoping that it would execute. And my order just sat there. It was sitting there through, and then it, through this whole time. Then it was sitting there through here, sitting there through here. Then when I started noticing it going red, I said, God damn it. Like, dude, it's not executing my order. I'm just going to have to fucking take this loss, you know, wait. And, uh, and that's exactly what I did. And it didn't execute my order until um, somewhere... Um, uh, I just got tired of watching it and it literally just defeated me and then um, I believe I came back to the market around five yeah somewhere in here but then it did have a nice pop 
which could have saved me some money um, and had me maybe a 5%, but I, I sold it somewhere in here. Um, but then today it did curl up and it did retest up here in the uh, 739, topped at 739 today, which would have gave me a nice 3% profit. Um, but man, lesson learned. Um, this shit just completely demolished me mentally. Uh, PPSI, it was a low flow runner, small cap. Um, just a, a beautiful thing. But the beautiful thing that I've been noticing now lately is that my pre-market breakouts are coming back. As you can see, I've been avoiding market open because as soon as we'd get these huge pre-market runs and then it'll just tank. But as you can see, went from um, $1.70 topped at 357 so that's over a hundred percent move and then it broke that's what i like to see but i've been avoiding market open because they haven't really been happening but i've been noticing them happening lately um so to readjust and go back to my just straight discipline 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 stick to my fucking plan because honestly today just demolished me man and it was so demoralizing but you know i'm still very enthused about it because of the data i collect um allows me to understand how to fucking work with this um and so i've been noticing that pre-market is kind of heating up back in my favor so if pre-market's heating up back in my favor um i believe the best thing for me to do right now just from noticing um lately that I have been getting these pre-market runners if they stay near the high. So as you can see, it consolidated near the high, then popped, ran. I mean, and this is a fucking 350 to 940, so that's a 200% move. You feel me? And that's the type of shit I look for. And this is straight squeeze up to uh, 643, so that's a $3 move on, if I would've purchased here, 350, I would've probably bought 200 shares, 30 cent, that's a that's a 60% move for me. Oh, I'm sorry. 30. Let's see. Oh yeah, three dollar, yeah, three dollar move. Yeah, that's a sick, that's a 60% move for me. That's that's beautiful. Um, so just because this was so demoralizing, I am now going to discipline myself to only trade pre-market breakouts that are holding near the high. Just like you see here, pops holds then it breaks so it looks like i'm going back to the market open um probably gonna wait for the first half hour so i'll probably set my alarm for 6 40 um just so i could see it you know get choppy a little bit and see the direction it's gonna head in um because i mean this is just a nice beautiful move right here um so i'm gonna have to go discipline myself to go back to just pre-market breakouts only no more morning spike reversals um, the only other trade I'm going to allow myself if nothing comes up in the pre-market will be at the end of day because look at all these, um, where are they at? Like this, like CVV. Look at this huge run and that wasn't until later. That wasn't until, you know, 92%. So it wouldn't even really pop up on my radar until this heavy volume came in somewhere in here when it breaks this, when it breaks this 530 area. Boom. Barely pulls back and runs. Um, this was also very nice. And, um, I thought about playing, watching this for a reversal, but again, it failed. And that's what I'm getting with these morning spike reversals is, uh, failures. So, uh, you know, it kind of defeated me, man. It really, really did. PPSI just defeated me. Whoop my ass. Um, but this one. I mean, look at that. I mean, that was just a pure squeeze um, in OPPT after I tried to buy it. And I could have been profitable if I was a bit more patient with it. But I took my loss. Um, and then same with um, ELSE. Same thing here. It winded up having its run. And if I'd have just been more patient with it, I would have been able to be profitable. Um, but I tried to buy it in this area, this pop. And then it just... It dropped and then it took off you know in this game in the stock market man it's really all about discipline and sticking to your plan stick to your fucking plan I recalculated all my data and realistically even though that the market slowed down if I were to stick to minus 6 plus 13 
my win rate for all my trades would have been 27% uh, accurate, 27% win rate, okay? But if I would have stuck to minus six plus, t plus 13 on all those trades out of 50 something trades so far, I would only be down about 11% on my position size, okay? So put that in perspective, 11% on my position size, okay? Right, I just took a fucking 34% loss in a single fucking day because even though I was, I readjusted and I was doing great, readjusting to my market conditions and understanding what I could capture um, from what was going on. Um, and now that it's slowly coming back, that's my point. If you keep changing, um, if you keep changing your strategy, it's gonna eventually bite you in the ass, which is what it did today because I was up 4% and I could have easily took it, but I wanted to wait and try to capture more of the move because of how great of a runner this truly was. And it truly looked like it was curling back up here and then it just tanks. Um, so, you know, because this is how I was looking, I see the pop, pulls back, pops, and then pull back and then it started curling. So I was expecting it to pop again, but it just failed. And I have to remember that too because in my last one, I seen something very similar, but it didn't have a huge pop. It was a pop, pull back, and then retested, then pull back, and then failed. This one popped, then broke out, popped here, pulled back, broke out, then came down. So I was thinking, okay, if it continues that trend, if I dip by it here, it could really, I was thinking it could actually retest. Did it happen? Um, so huge, huge loss, uh, demoralizing loss. Um, Overall on my account, a 34% loss on my position size to my account size that it was like a 10% loss on my account, which is huge for me. M minus 10% on my net in one fucking day is huge. Usually I'm losing about 1% net, you know? And so for me to lose 10% net on my account, man, that was a, that was a huge uh, punch in the gut for me. Um, I took some time to reflect after. Um, I wasn't even in the mood to record this video. Um, it just completely mm, got me. You feel me? It got me good, man. It got me really good. Um, but again, you know, this is the game we play. And it's really just, again, goes back to solidifying the discipline to stick to my fucking plan. Um, it, even though all my small losses, one, I executed six trades in one fucking day. I said that before, I've done that before and I broke even, I did not like that. Why am I executing so many trades in a fucking day? I should execute two. No more than two, three max, but two is the most I should really execute. Took six in a fucking day, that was the first mistake. That was breaking discipline, okay? Minus six trades in a single fucking day and I was down minus 14% on those six trades and then not to mention technically a seventh trade which was an overnight trade which fucking smacked me for another 20% because I had no day trades left. And even though I was up in it pre-market this morning, pre-market didn't execute my fucking order. So I just completely missed out on literally breaking even or fucking, you know, you know, um, what did you call it? Um, just thanking fucking God that, okay, cool, I could have got out for breaking even or just a little bit of profit, but no. Um, Pre-market wouldn't allow me to execute my trade, which I think I deserved, you know, because that's not part of my plan. And so, uh, and I knew it from the beginning. I had, as soon as I executed that fucking trade, I was disappointed in myself. I was almost tempted to sell it, but if I did, I'd be on a three-month hold in this fucking account due to the pattern day trading rule, and I didn't want to be on a three-month hold. Um, so hold, holding and hoping is what I had to do. And, um, and I was right, and it did bounce, as you can see over here in this corner. It did curl back and eventually come and retest my area and would have been profitable, but it just took too long and it dipped too far for me to be comfortable with um, to just stay in it because uh, I was already down 20% on that one fucking trade. So this, this PPSI just ripped me a new one and tore me up big time. Um, but again, it just made me re-solidify me sticking to my plan. And, and overall in, in the actual long term that is the blessing why you never want to trade with your whole position size of your entire net and that's how i was knocked out the game early um in my career of trading because on a four thousand dollar account 
my trades would be, you know, $3,000 position size is $4,000 position size. So to take a 30% loss on a $4,000 account, that's, uh, you know, do the math, man. That's over $1,000, you know, that's looking at like $1,500 a position size, $1,500 in one fucking day. And, you know, and, and that's exactly why I separated my four grand into three different accounts. So I could only trade with a maximum of $1,000 share hands because even those 34% of my position size that I got hit for in one day, it was really only a 10% loss on my maximum account. And, um, you know, those are the lessons learned, man. So I just took a huge lesson learned to just be disciplined to what I collected my data on and to what I'm seeing instead of trying to chase a massive movement because I was afraid of missing a huge runner trying to be greedy when I could have collected my 4%. But no, greed got the best of me. The fear of missing a huge move got the best of me. And I kept trading it because I was in revenge mode like, fuck, this little bitch fucking got me once, got me twice, got me three times. Oh, I got to try again, got me four times. And God damn it, I'm going to try a fifth fucking time and blew me out the fucking water for doing it. Okay? Lesson fucking learned. This is a psychological battle within yourself. This is all on me. This isn't the market's fault. This is my fault. I should have cut it after two and been done in that first account. Should have never traded in the second account and I would have had three trades to trade today. And I could have probably got this bounce or capitalized on something else or took a loss on something else. Even here, beautiful pre-market breakout. Again, another market open, AREC. Right here, boom, pre-market break, boom. Beautiful move. Um, goes from 150, tops at 330, so over 100% move, just like I like to see. And then boom, breaks out from 350, tops at 468 before pulling back and topping at five or 493, um, which is a great fucking move, again, Maybe 200 shares, a um, dollar, that's over 20 to 30% move right there. That's beautiful, pre-market breakout. Same thing like we seen, um, what was the other one? Um, oh, PPSI from the previous day, from the day I actually traded it. Exactly what I like to see. 100% move, stay near the high, boom, busted through for a big run. That's what I've been looking for. Um, they're looking like they're starting to come back. Back to discipline. Market open, pre-market. Just market open. Sit, come to the market at 6.40 a.m. If it's a pre-market breakout, we're buying, okay? If it meets the criteria. Uh, which everything met the criteria from market cap, from uh, float, from float rotation. It was beautiful. I mean, look at this heavy volume in here. It's beautiful. Again... It's a constant readjustment game, man. So it's a constant readjustment game. Um, took a big hit in one of my accounts. Literally in one of my accounts. Um, it was my smallest account, actually. But, man, damn near took a 50% loss in that account so far. Because that 30% uh, pretty much was in that one account. And so it, it hit me because uh, that was about a $1,200 account. And I was probably at maybe about a little over 900 in that account and then boom took a 30 percent loss now i'm down to 600 dollars in that one account um because of just this ppsi if i would have just cut it and moved on the two trades i took in that account would have still left me doable um you know and i'd have been fine uh, my other two accounts are still still up there um close to break even still down a little bit in both of them but very close to break even and and then i wound up taking this massive big behemoth bitch fucking wipe me out for for my shit but that's my fault mental breakdown literally literally a mental breakdown um just completely went off off the reservoir on this shit and it got me good man i deserved i deserved every bit of it i deserved every fucking bit of it um it's a lesson that i definitely have to take in and that's why i reflected all day yesterday didn't even make a video because i just wanted to just sit and think about think about why why did i do that why and then, like I said, um, trading psychology, um, you know, um, uh, 
Dr. Brent Steenberger, his fucking book, uh, 101 Ways to Become Your Own Trading Psychiatrist, The Daily Trading Coach. Dude, that fucking tells it all, man. So that told me, man, I had fucking fear of missing out. Got me. I got greedy because I was afraid I was going to miss out on a big move. And then I kept at it because now I was in revenge mode because I took a loss, then another loss, then another loss, and another loss. And I was like, motherfucker, I, this shit got a pop. It got a reverse. And then it bit me again because I wasn't no longer playing the pattern or playing the strategy. I was now playing my emotions of, damn it, I want to recoup this money back. And that's what got me. And I'm actually very proud that this is the first time it's actually happened since my trading journey. So in the last, this is now I'm going on month three. In the first two months, well, really, realistically, I'm on, if I'm going fiscal year, I started August 12th. So August 12th to September 12th to now September 12th. So I'm basically at the end of my second month of my journey. Um, that it's, you know, it, it bit me. It bit me good. You know, I traded my emotions to that yesterday and I didn't trade the plan. And it fucking bit me in the ass hard. Um, so something to learn. Uh, and I'm learning from it. And I'm understanding how, where I made my mistake on this. And, um, you know, the goal is to never make that mistake again. Um, and the way to never make that mistake again is stick to the fucking plan, man. Stick to the fucking plan. Um, again, like I said, man, I noticed that if I would have just stuck to minus 6 plus 13 this whole time, um, I would be pretty much break even compared to right now. Um, it's This one just took a huge toll on me. Um, and it, it bit me in my ass hard. Really hard. Um, so very disappointed in myself for not sticking to my plan. And letting my emotions get the best of me. Um, this is the first time it's happened. So I, I'm not too rough on myself. But I did take the time to reflect. To understand why. Why did I do that? Why? Fear of missing out and revenge trading is why I did what I did. My emotions took completely over and it bit me in the ass. And that's what happens in trading. If you allow yourself to trade with your emotions instead of trading with your plan. Your, plan, your proper fucking plan. That, that you've collected data on and you understand how to trade, then everything goes out the window because where are the numbers at now? You're not trading with the plan. You're just fucking buying shit, hoping that it's going to fucking do something. And that's what I did. Um, so, yeah, man, lesson learned for PPSI. Um, the other two, uh, OPTT and ELSE, I was happy with those trades and they did wind up doing what I wanted to because I took two losses on those trades as well. Yesterday, um, they did wind up turning out and do what I wanted to. And if I was stuck to minus 6 plus 13 for those two particulars, I would have been profitable. But again, fear, right? Fear took over because of this. So, you know, I was already down too much money uh, on the day. And I should have never even traded. But like I said, uh, revenge trading took over. Uh, emotional trading took over. And it bit me in the fucking ass hard. I can't repeat that enough. It bit me in the fucking ass hard. Emotional trading will always bite you in the ass hard. Hard. You feel me? Um, so yeah, man. So lesson, lesson learned. Um, so now I'm going to strictly discipline myself. Okay? 6.40 a.m. Pre-market breakouts. Okay? That is what you have data on. Minus 6 plus 13 for pre-market breakouts. Second. Don't buy nothing at all. If there's nothing in the pre-market breakout, if there's nothing within the first 640 to 740, if nothing happens, okay, close the fucking laptop. Give yourself a break. Wait till 930, preferably 930, then come back in the market and look for a later day move, okay? Okay, only two things I want to play right now. Okay, no more fucking dip buying, no more morning spike reversals for right now. Because of this, I either want to buy a pre-market breakout or an intraday breakout on a gradual climb that looks very similar to this. But when this around here is instead of 7.48 a.m., uh, maybe 10.48 a.m., 9.48 a.m. Okay, that's it. I just want to buy breakouts. No more dipping, motherfucker. Okay? That's it. Stick to those two fucking things. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Stick to the fucking plan, James. Stick to the fucking plan. Because uh, everything was going great. And that's that's the problem. That's what happens with most traders. Um, 
like I said, my last 26 trades, uh, 28 trades, something like that. I was 48, 50% win rate. Um, profitable, not by a lot, but I was green at the end of them. I believe I was green about 7%, something like that. And then here comes PPSI and just smacks that 7% right in the dirt and takes another fucking 24% with it because of pure ignorance and emotion. Emotional trading is not my friend, okay? It's not my friend. I don't like you, I don't do that, all right? So you feel me? I can't get too down on myself, man, because I understand what happened here, okay? That's the whole key of data. Understand why, and I understand why, and, um, and now it's, you know, now I'm gearing in that, hey, look, man, and like I said, back to the market open, which is where originally all my data came from, um, during a hot market, and it's looking like the market's heating up a little get, a little bit, man. So um, again, that could have been a good move that day. Um, as we see here, this would have been a good late day move. Look, this is at 10:55. You know, look, if I'd have came in at nine, you know, like I said, if I'd have came after 9:30, here we are. You know, I could have easily bought a break in here. And, uh, you know, I might have took a loss, but if I'd have stick to minus 6 plus 13, it doesn't look like I would have took a big, I wouldn't have been down less than, I'd have been down less than minus 6. And then I could have caught a run. And same thing here. Um, Pre-market breakout. If I'd have been in here pre-market, or I mean at the market open, boom. Um, so, yeah, man, it's just something. Uh, see, this is what I was used to seeing. Pops and then fades out, as I've explained. That was the current state of the market, but things are starting to turn a little bit. Um, see here too, pop. But see, it doesn't stay near the high. It pops, pulls back. I wanna see a pop and then hold near the high if I'm gonna buy a pre-market breakup. But again, it never breaks pre-market here, so that would've been a dead stock to me. And then it never comes back. Like this is eight o'clock, so about 9.30. If I wait till 9.30, this would've been a reverse. Nope, I wanna see gradual. No reverses. No more reverse, okay? No more morning spike reversals. We're gonna buy the gradual climb, intraday breakout, or pre-market breakout. I and because the market's heating up, and from what I'm seeing, I think I'll be very comfortable with going back to minus six plus 13. Um, obviously, my one account, I am now below a thousand. And uh, so that one, I'm gonna have to um, play with a little bit and go minus six plus 13 based off their numbers. Um, so they probably look slightly different. Um, but my other two accounts, I'm still very much uh, a thousand or more. Um, so I could definitely still play my thousand dollar share hands uh, at minus six plus 13. So um, again, this was a great lesson. I believe this is probably the best lesson I have on a video lesson. And that's straight psychology, man. Emotional trading is not a friend to any trader. Trade like a robot. I understand that, man. And uh, and uh, yeah, man. I just uh, you also have to be aware of what's going on in your life. You have to be aware of of um, everything. Your your thought process uh, outside of trading um, before you come into the market. And uh, and I've been so relaxed lately because I've been coming to the market late um, because of just I haven't really liked nothing that. I think I just relaxed a little too much that, you know, I got so used to just buying these little pops, buying and selling these little pops, and that became the norm, and then I'm trying to capture a big move now on, on a reversal. So, you know, lesson learned, um, PPSI, huge loss, but a great lesson learned. So again, pre-market breakouts only, or after 9.30 a.m., um, a gradual climb intraday breakout. Um, that's going to be it for today. Um, yeah, man, you just got to stay on track. That's it, guys. Stay on track, and that's what I plan to do, man. So learn from the lessons, learn from it, move on, stay optimistic. You got this. No problem. Peace.